with this analogy. Mokham is pretty good. Is it still free? Is it all that? You never did. There is a, a, a word on my heart with regard to um, a well-known story that we all have heard plenty of times, and the kids, I think, is especially fond of it. The story of Jonah. Um, but uh, in reading through it and, 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 and studying it and meditating on it, um, what came out to me is, is the part that the wicked one played in that as well. Um, and, and we know that he is the father of lies, and he comes to steal and to destroy, um, to rob and to what's the other one? Um, kill. That's the one I was looking for, kill. Um, and what, when thinking about it is, what I realized is that the devil, the wicked one, or whatever you want to call him, is not blatantly obvious. It's always just plants very subtle, fire subtle. If you, you just twist the two. And now, I'm just like what I need to say it is, if you think about the account in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent um, was speaking to Eve, he says, and when Eve explained why they couldn't eat of that tree, and she said, God said that we will die. And he just said, you will surely not die, or surely you will not die, or something along those lines. But I can almost hear how he twisted it and, and put it in a, in a tone of voice um, and maybe put a question mark at the back of that, really saying, do you really think you will die? When you eat that? It's so good. Just look at how beautiful the fruit is. And we know what happened. Um, and, and if you think about it, uh, maybe Eve thought about dying in, in, a, in a bodily fashion, but we know that we all died because of that. Um, in our connection with, uh, with the Lord and, and Father. And so the, the devil is always on the prowl. Uh, we know he's in, in, in the account of Cain and Abel when, when the Lord said to him, um, you know what to do, and if you don't be aware, the devil is lying at your door um, like a roaring lion, um, ready to devour you. Um, and if you... The, the, the wicked one's greatest lie is to tell us that we are okay. To reinforce to us that there is enough time to make right with God. Even though we are maybe advanced in years, there's always him saying, don't worry, there will be tomorrow. There will be tomorrow. Don't worry about today. We can make it ready, uh, right again tomorrow. Don't listen to the law today. Next week you can first do X, Y, and Z, and after doing that, um, then there's plenty of time to carry on and, and follow the Lord and do what He's called you to do. Or you can repent again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's was that. I've got a friend in, 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 that I trained with long ago, which I spoke to, and, and he said to me, yes, now I do believe, um, and that we stop. I'm okay. I do believe I'm okay. Um, and I can ask for forgiveness again. Thank you for the Lord. Open the door. Okay. Um, and now if we, look, if we turn to, to the book of Jonah, I want to, to highlight how the wicked one was also involved in in this story, um, and how we, by listening to him, can sometimes justify our acts and our ways. Um, now, I don't know, but something that, that, that I only discovered in this week is, we know that Jonah was a prophet, and he was a man of God, and he was an Hebrew, an Israelite. And in verse 1 of Jonah, it starts off with, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for thy wickedness is come up before me. Now just some background here, I don't know if you know, Nineveh was a capital city of the Assyrians, 
which was a fierce enemy of the Israelites. They oppressed them and they almost want to say hunted them down. And um, yeah, as I say, they were an, um, the enemy and Gentiles. Now we can forgive Jonah in that time, thinking to himself, why should I go to a Gentile nation that, well, first of all, Gentiles, and secondly, maybe, maybe worse than that, they are oppressing the Lord's people. Um, they are kept, um, caught up in idolatry and a lot of other things. Why should I go there and minister? Surely I'm a prophet. And then the first lie of the of the of the devil, the wicked one, comes to Jonah, and he says to Jonah, or that Jonah arose up, and he fled to Tarshish. Tarsh, we know, got into a ship, and it says there in in in, in verse three, the end of it, um, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now thinking about that. So Jonah was thinking that he can hide from the Lord. If you are in a skippy klim and vachsail na on a statue, then the Lord won't find it. Um, surely that must be the, 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 the work of the evil one saying, listen here, this is what you can do. Surely God can't find you if you're in another city. Um, but we know if we read the Psalms that the Lord is, if, it's, if we go to the west, he's there, and to the south, east, he's there. Uh, go up into heaven is there and down to the, the depths of the earth. There he is as well. So Jonah, as we know, he, he climbed onto the skippy and he sailed off. Um, and we know the story of the storm arising and all the people on the ship, it says they are Gentiles. And they cried out to their gods and nothing happened and they found Jonah at the bottom of the ship um, uh, sleeping. And they said to him, explain to us where you, who you are, where you're from, um, and, and what, um, um, who, do you, who do you pray to? And he said, I, I fear the God that made heaven and earth. I'm an Israelite, a Hebrew, and this storm is because of me. And then he stuck me, right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. He knows, he knows that he's not following that. Linking to that, thank you for that, Peter. So we also know, just to, to go to verse one, verse 1 again, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. We know that John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Now this was the Lord Jesus speaking to, to Jonah, if you can put it, put it like that, because the word came unto Jonah. And so we also hear the Lord speaking to us. We have it in his word, we have it in ministering to us by his Holy Ghost. And as Peter said, we know we do certain things. We know that there are certain um, consequences to that. And then we know it's because we did not listen to the Lord. Um, what's, it, what, what's really standing out to me in, in this is those Gentile duties there on the ship immediately cried out to the God of heaven and earth as well and said, please don't let us perish and when they had to chuck him over the boat, they said, please don't um, reckon this innocent blood onto our hand. Um, and the Lord, oh, the Lord, the guy threw him over and immediately he became quiet. Now, if you think about it, those were not God's people, those Jews on the ship. They were Gentiles. They were just a few minutes earlier shouting and maybe sacrificing and doing whatever to their God. But God also had mercy on them, and for them also quieted the, the, the storm, so that they could be saved. Jonah, we know, got caught up into the big fish, and there in the bottom, in the belly of the fish, sitting between all the food and darams and whatever, he repented. Can you men mention that? He, was, he repented and said, Lord, I'm sorry. Um, and yet, if you think about it, just when he was up there on the ship, he, he was no different to the other Gentile people. Yes, he was a Hebrew, and he was a prophet, um, but let's call it that, that um, earthly title. Because when you don't obey what the Lord has been telling you, when you don't um, um, do what he said, that when you don't listen to him, then in fact you're a sinner and you've, you've walked away from him. And only once he was on his knees again, going back to the Lord, we know, thank, thank God for that, 
that he is gracious and merciful, and he accepted him and said, fine, I will forgive you. And so he also had the mercy um, on the other Gentiles that was, was staying on the ship. Um, and then we read, we can go through the rest of the story, but we know that Jonah got out of the, out of the whale, out of the big fish, not whale, out of the fish, and then he said, I will go. And the word of the Lord came again to him and said, go to Nineveh. Um, and when you read, it's only when, the, when I read that, I um, just want to take you there, um, in, ver- in, in chapter 3, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now maybe we can forgive Jonah in the first account, because I, when I read this, what was to be said to the guys at Nineveh was not, I interpreted it, revealed to Jonah yet. The instruction was, go to Nineveh and preach, and I will tell you what to say when you get there. So the wicked one jumped onto that bandwagon, I'm pretty certain, in the first instance, and said to him, like the Buddha, you don't even know what you're going to tell these Assyrians. The Lord just said to you, go, and go and preach, and, and, cry, out again, um, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. Um, but what I gather from that is, it, he was not told what to preach it. So the, the wicked one came to him and said, listen, yes, man, it's a Hebrew duty. You want to go into a city that's so big that it takes three days to walk from the one side to the other side, filled with Assyrians, guys who are um, um, sacrificing to idols, and guys is making war against the Israelites. Now you're going as a sole Israelite, going in there, and now you're going to preach to them, and you don't even know what you're going to say. But fortunately for Jonah, he did go. Um, and all he said as he went into, the, into, into Nineveh. So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city um, of three days' journey. That's in verse 3. And Jonah began to enter into the city of a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So I said, Dag lang ka ingestap, and he just cried out, Veertig dae, and Nineveh will perish. Full stop, end of the story, no long minute, no long sermon, because we know that God is the one ministering to the people's hearts that we go out to share the gospel with. And we sometimes think, yeah, my, my word is my den, I don't know how to, I can't speak elo- eloquently, I can't do this, I can't do, do, do that. Um, but sometimes when you listen to, to the testimonies of people that came to the Lord, it was a one line that someone dropped maybe having coffee, or by looking at that or seeing that, instead of sitting in a, in a church or a church building um, where people had a sermon of, of 45 minutes, um, it's usually just those small little lines, and that's when, when the Holy Ghost speaks the heart. Um, and, and, and we know that, that Saul also um, if we, if we pull it back to us, Paul now he became Paul. The question to, in this, in this morning is, how long are we going to resist against the truth? And the, the, simple, the simple message that, that Saul also preached, it, re, it reads there in, 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 in Acts chapter 9, I think. Just, you don't have to turn there, I'm just quickly, I think it's, yeah. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. And straight away he preached Christ in the synagogue, that he is the Son of God. Um, that is what, what Paul, at that stage, was just ministering and said, listen, yeah, that Christ that you crucified, he was or is the Son of God. Full stop, end of story, that's how it is. And we know that out of, of, out of Paul's ministry, a lot of people, a lot of churches were planted and a lot of people came to Christ. Yes, obviously, further on, he became more skilled in preaching the gospel. But that's, a, that's something that's really um, encouraging me Simple, simple word um, to a needy people will be will be will be um, sufficient. It's almost like when you're in the desert, in the wilderness, and there's no water around, and you think to yourself, "I can the doors, I can a dumb opening." But if someone can just hand you 200 mils of water, you will love that, and you will 
appreciate that. Jy sal hom opdrink en jy sal het syver en het inneem en dink, joch, hierdie water is nou lekker. And maybe that's, if you, if you put it in, in comparison to, to finding an oasis, there's a lot of water, then you jump into the water and you swim and you, but I don't think you really enjoyed it like when you only have that little bit of water, you know this is all you have and you must take care of it to, to take you through the rest of the wilderness. <clears throat> so Jonah went and he preached and lo and behold, the whole city came to repentance. Uh, the king actually sent out a, a command and saying, not even the animals are allowed to drink and eat. We are fasting, we are putting on sackcloth, and we are having ashes thrown over our head, and we are saying sorry. Um, if we, it comes up to me in the Ephesians, um, Ephesians 2, I think it says, but God who is rich in mercy um, loved us with his great love. Um, and so he was also to this this um, um, Gentile nation, the oppressors of the Israelites. We, we read in, the, in chapter 4 that he turned away from his plans and said, well, they've turned to me and I will save them. And then we read in, 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 in chapter 4 of Jonah as well that Jonah was then very upset. And maybe I can put it back again to us. When we are going out to preach the, the gospel or meet with people, we may be justified in our flesh Maybe I, someone else must, must be going, because I'm, that guy, he, he does a lot of wicked stuff. Uh, maybe he's not the serving of grace. And, and our flesh is inclined to, to want justice before grace. And that's not how our Lord Jesus and our Father God is. He's giving us grace first, and then we know who those who um, does not accept him. In that day of judgment, they will experience his judgment. But at this stage, the grace is free. And that's the command that we also receive in, in, in uh, Matthew 10. It says, freely we have received, now freely give. Um, and that is what God also told Jonah. You've received this city. Go and preach the good news to the people of Nineveh. Um, so Jonah was sitting there and, and thinking, yes, but I knew this was going to happen. That's why I didn't want to go in the first place. I knew that God was going to be merciful. And these people, they deserve the judgment of God. But God had other plans. And so he taught the lesson to Jonah. We know about the tree coming up and going away. And Jonah being very upset. And God said to him, but why are you upset about the tree? You did not do anything for the tree. Now you're upset because it's not, shelter, it's not sheltering you of the, the sun anymore. Um, and Jonah then actually answered the Lord and said, I've got reason to be upset. And God said to him, no, no, you don't have any reason. You now have reason to be upset about this tree. How much more? Um, and then you want to come and tell me that I should destroy a city with, um, it says here, uh, more than six score, uh, 120,000 people, the new translation says. You want me to come and destroy a city that I made um, and that I care for. Who are you to, to tell me to do that? In 2 Corinthians 6, um, if you turn with me to the, that scripture. Second <clears throat> Corinthians 6 verse 2. Um, I'm going to read the last part and it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And I want to put in there, or now they have your salvation. Now, we know that I trust that we have all experienced the day of our salvation and that we are living in that. But also, today is the day that we should, today and going forward, is the perfect day to bring salvation to other people. Um, not to be like Jonah, first thinking, why well, shouldn't be going? Listening to the lies of the wicked one, hiding, going to another town, maybe first completing task X, Y, and Z before going out and fully committing myself to the Lord. Today is the day. Not only for our salvation, but also to bring the salvation to other people. You know the great commandment in, in Matthew 28, where the Lord said, go out, and teach and baptize everyone. 
in the of the Father in front of the Holy Ghost. Now that is a, a massive um, um, commandment that we have received. Um, let us not sit on that and wait for better days and think to ourselves, oh, that's not Vicky Young. I first want to conquer this and do that. Maybe obtain a degree first. Maybe build my house in Langebaan. Then after that, I can really submit my ways unto the Lord. Um, you think of the book of Esther where, where that, um, that prophet said to Esther, be weird at that Who knows? Maybe you are put in a time and a place like this to save the people. And if the elf came to know, oh, and to say, work no, sorry. If you don't go, if you don't go, God will raise up someone else. Um, and all we're doing by delaying this is that we are just taking away from our own blessing. Um, God wants to bless us like we can't imagine. Um, and by postponing these things and by thinking about the first I have to do X, Y, and Z, and first I'm going to, let's call it, stimulate my flesh and, and um, uh, adhere to those things and get all these things in order, what we're basically just doing is we're just postponing and maybe in a certain sense, taking away blessing that God has in store for us. Because now he's it's, it's, it's raising, uh, raising up someone else to say, well, Andre Vajit Sabinetu, now you go. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think, I think so. <clears throat> so that's the, the message that the Lord has placed in my heart. Um, and what I found in these things is the Lord is more, more often than not speaking to 